Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Some of you in peace out to the rest of you. This here is Black Heart, signing Black in again, asking you to hit that share button. You know what it is, you know why. This is part two of uh, why it is that a Muslim uh, might even have to become red pill and immor, a practicing Muslim. Ahmed Metwali, who was Muslim and he is not black and he is of Arab extraction, goes by the handle Alpha Male Lifestyles. And uh, he's very red pill, and he actually points out um, stories from the scripture that uh, point to a red pill conclusion. He's pointed this out in many cases, and he said, you know, there's, there are reasons that in Islam women can't be judges, they cannot be uh, national leaders, they can be ministers of government departments appointed by a male national leader, but they can't be national leaders, they cannot be imams, um, and uh, they can't run the household. He, see, he will tell you, <laughs> you listen to his videos, he'll break it down for you. No, 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 you can't do that. Let me tell you what these whole jobbies are doing. Now, in the last point, part one, I pretty much talked about Western women in general and what they're doing. In this one, I'm going to tell you that, the, that, that take out the Western woman in general, the Western Muslim woman, if you only, if you have no experience romantically or sexually with women outside of having married a Western Muslima, you will have to become red pill. You'll be forced to. Now, why would I say it like that? Why would you be forced to become red pill? Well, the reason I say it that way is because, you see, um, Muslim women raised in traditional Muslim environments do have their flaws. I mean, they hate polygamy, even though that's a part of the revelation. They can't stand it. But by the same token, um, uh, there's certain, I mean, they don't just walk around disrespecting their men just for the sake of doing it. But you will see evidence of that same type of nature. I remember a Saudi man telling me one time, you know, the, he said at the hospital, they were talking to this white Canadian guy and they were very friendly and giggling and laughing. They were nice to him. If it was me and they were giving me an injection, they would be rough. There'd be no, they, they wouldn't even be polite. They would raise their voices. They shout, talk, speak harshly, even if I don't mean any harm because of the culture. I don't appreciate them treating the Saudi men like we're the bottom of their shoe and then turning around and dealing with not only a non-Saudi man, but a non-Muslim man and smiling all up in his face like they want him to take them home. That's inappropriate. And if they're afraid to do that with us and we're not good enough for even just friendly conversation because it would embarrass them in front of their friends, then they can't do this with somebody else. I don't like being singled out, especially by, by the women of my own background like I did something wrong when I didn't. I don't like the way they, they talk towards the, the way they talk to Saudi men. He told me they can say things to men and we're not even allowed to raise our voices at them. I'm getting sick of this. And this is in um, this was in his country. This wasn't in the West. But if you were in the West and your only experience is being married to a Western Muslim and you're practicing uh, uh, practicing Muslim man in the West, you have to know these things because the fact that you are a practicing Muslim man and you don't have many, you don't have experience dating and screwing a bunch of women means that more women are looking at you as an easy target. And the fact that they're Muslim don't stop them from targeting you. You're easy and they're going to do it. Now, it doesn't mean that every single woman's going to. What it does mean, though, is that the women that want to do this the most are the ones that have the most interest in getting with you and marrying you. That's what that means, because the, the, the serious, really good hearted practicing Muslim woman, she's more than likely being charmed into marrying a guy that don't deserve her. More than likely, that's what's going on. And he may have another wife or just girlfriends. That happens a lot. The pious women that actually don't want to take advantage of men, they get with men and wind up taking advantage of them. That's what winds up happening. So I'm going to tell you another thing that, that will make you red pill if you were a, a, uh, a Muslim man. In the UK, I mentioned this before in a previous video, Muhammad Hoblis was giving da'wahs. That means he's, he was preaching to the Muslims. Now that da'wah can mean you're inviting non-Muslims to Islam, which I support, or it can mean that you are inviting Muslims to come back into the practice or take it more seriously or improve a particular element of a dimension of the faith, which I also support. Wholeheartedly, 200% unapologetically. But 
Muhammad Hoblos said he was talking about Muslims who want to be gangsters and Muslim gangsters. And it's a good video to, to check out, I would say so. He's talking to the, the youth in the UK, most of whom come from um, a Bengali or a Pakistani background. And for the most part, the ones that really want to be gangsters, but they're Muslim because their parents are, they usually come from Pakistani neighborhoods and Pakistani families, and they go into this stuff. And then there are several who come from uh, Somali families, and then they wind up in this gang business. What he was saying is that, you know, he, he said pretty much said, I'm sick and tired of these young Muslim women that are so obsessed with the ex-bad boy. They love to say, oh, he's got tattoos. I mean, but mashallah, he's changed now. He's repented of all of that. He made Toba, and he's not like that anymore. And he was pretty much saying, Indirectly, he was saying, you've got practicing Muslim men that were never that way. They've always been practicing. At the very least, they were not into that gangster road band stuff. And they didn't get tattoos at the very least. And for them, either it was a lot less to repent from or they stayed. They were always practicing. What's wrong with them? Why are you obsessed with only the ones that used to be bad guys, but they're so-called not like that anymore? And then you find out two years later after marrying them that no, they're somewhat still like that. At the very least, they probably have girlfriends from the past. Either she's a second wife and didn't tell you, which isn't really wrong in and of itself, but he didn't tell you or He's just having an affair with an ex-girlfriend while he's married to you. So he repented of all the drug dealing and stabbing and everything else. But boy, when it came to getting that dingling wet, you just weren't going to be enough. What happens then? Because that was in the system and he was addicted. He made Toby. He was still addicted. And there's no counseling center for that. Do you understand what that I mean, if you were a man, Muslim or not, you can understand what that would be like if you were Muslim and you were practicing all your life. And the pious woman, the one that is religious, that was practicing all her life the same way you were, says pretty much directly uh, uh, through the mouth or indirectly through the actions of both. Pretty much shows you that you're never going to compare to the guy who was out there doing dirt. Because she assumes you're a wimp and a coward, even if you're not. And she assumes that he's brave, even if he never retaliated against an enemy without checking to see who all of his homeboys were, because he had to make sure he and his boys outnumbered that guy and their crew, never going up against a number equal or greater to their own. He never did. And he's got a point about that. Well, who is he? They would ask this before retaliation. Who is he and who is his crew and who does he run with and how many are they? Now, it's good to know this ahead of time to prepare. For, but these dudes would not go up against somebody that was greater in number than them. And that's some animal stuff, because if you really fight in somebody because you have to fight, it's something you believe in. You go up against a number greater than yourself. You come up with something else to give you an advantage. But you don't say we just going to let them go because they, you know, they outnumber us by a little bit. The point I'm making is that you have this same thing going on in the Western Muslim communities in the UK, and they're mostly Muslim. Now, you think that that will be a type of reinforcement? No, it's not. It's not. No, 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 no. You got a lot of dudes that fall into that gangster lifestyle, and you got a lot of Muslim women who aren't fornicating, rewarding these men with the pussy. And the marriage. Not even just fornicating with them, but when they repent, then they go and they marry these guys. So the sex they have is completely lawful within Islam. But what they're pretty much saying is, I'm going to give the best of my peace leave to this guy over here with these tattoos because he can scare somebody and I feel safe. But the guy over here, even though he's not a coward and he would fight for me, I'm not going. He's he's just unattractive because he's just manly, simply because he obeyed God for longer and from a younger age. Now, if that don't make you red pill when you Muslim, amen, uh, that, that would actually mean something's wrong with you because they're showing you that their nature, while they can serve a purpose, is not something that they're going to control, but it's something that the men have to control for them. Liberation, with which I would normally agree, has shown that they will not control their nature. It controls them. Men have to control their nature or women will call us all kind of pigs and dogs, even when we control it. But they don't have to control their nature. And this is even in the Western Muslim communities. Are you effing kidding me? How do you learn this and not become blue pill? 
because you be, I mean, you begin to understand, okay, it's okay that a woman doesn't want a wimp and a coward. You get it. You don't blame them for that. But how are you going to justify the fact that they're sitting up here looking at normal men who just don't get involved in violence as though they're wimps and cowards because they didn't get involved in violence when they were young? At the very least, they didn't seek it out. How are you going to sit up here and judge men like that? That's exactly what the Western woman is doing. Well, guess what? The Western Muslim woman in many cities is actually worse than the Western non-Muslim woman. That's why a lot. Look, what's going to happen? A lot of these Muslim men are going to become red pill. There's nothing I can do to stop it. There's nothing you can do to stop it unless you're ladies and you get together and you decide that you're going to change how you act. And it's going to have to be against your nature. And we've already seen how that works. So there's nothing that, that, that we men can do to stop these other men from becoming red pill. It's impossible. I mean, shit, it's impossible for me to not be red pill. I sat up and I saw it with my own two eyes. I don't have to agree with every conclusion that every other red pill man has ever drawn. It's not that. Because it's not a religion. Islam is the religion. You believe in a revelation wholeheartedly, 100%. But what I do want you to understand, too, is that at the end of the day, um, yeah, I want you to understand, too, that the, at the end of the day, what we're dealing with here is that you are saying, if you, if you take the, the Western non-Muslim woman out of it, you still got to deal with the excess materialism, not the allowed materialism, but the excess materialism of the Western Muslim woman. With the excess hybristophilia of the uh, Western Muslim woman. You have to deal with the fact that she will take the responsibilities of the husband in Islam and rub them in your face. She will take the rights of the wife in Islam, rub them in your face, but she will never deal with your rights or her responsibilities. And then in addition to that, she's going to take the rights of the Western woman under no religion at all and rub them in your face as well. She's going to do that. She's going to tell you, look, I should be allowed to work, but you can't but you can't ask for none of my money. Well, OK, that's fine. Actually, in Islam, that does work. But guess what? In Islam, alimony is not part of the deal. Child support. Actually, the man's supposed to take custody of the kids because he's responsible for them. But alimony is not. A, you, you don't. There's no reason that, that you get paid after you don't sleep with this man no more and you don't do nothing for this. You don't owe him nothing. And he still owes you money. That doesn't exist. It's not the way that works. So that being said, that, it, it's, that being said, she's going to sit up here and try to get all her rights under Islam and under a liberated West. And how does she do it? She tells you, I want this high dowry, this expensive dowry for you to marry me. That's the first thing. Then afterwards, I, 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 I don't have to work. You do. I don't have to work, but I can if I want to. And if I do, my money's mine. Now, that's actually Islamically valid. But then she sits up here and she doesn't work. And then when she doesn't work, uh, she gets bored with you. Because, you know, you're a good guy. And in the West, a good guy is boring and weak and wimpish and, and cowardly and all this other stuff. So because you're actually a good hearted man, um, you're a wimp. And some would say, well, maybe you're just boring and she, she would get bored. No, 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 no. Western women get bored even if you're not boring. You could be into skydiving. It's the wrong sport. Well, that, no, I, I want a man that's into football. Okay, or basketball. And you see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this, right? So, you know, it has to be something where some other man has to be afraid of you. So it's got to be football. It's got to be, and I mean, American football. It's got to be maybe basketball, but that doesn't really intimidate a whole lot of people enough. Boxing, UFC, MMA, that's great. You could be into that because you're beating somebody else up. But the minute you lose a fight and you take on an injury that affects her in any way, she's out. That's how that works. God forbid you get into that and you don't make enough money doing it. I mean, it's, you can't make them happy. So then when she gets bored and we're talking about the Muslim woman, she going to take you to divorce court and divorce rape your butt just like a non-Muslim woman would. She going to go for alimony, too, even though that's not in Islam. She going to go for child custody, even though that's not in Islam. She going to try to get you kicked out of your house, but make you still pay, even though that's not in Islam. She going to everything that's not in Islam, but will still benefit for benefit her. She going to grab on to that. And think that it is perfectly okay to do so. And then she gonna turn around and then guess what's gonna happen after she's done after she's done divorce raping your butt. She's gonna take them resources and she's gonna have a boyfriend. Even though that's not in Islam, even though actually uh, fornicating after you've been legally married 
is a death sentence if you could prove it could happen. Now, nobody's ever proven this case. Uh, but the thing is that if you can prove that this has happened, uh, it's a death sentence, a capital offense. Married, divorced, and then you fornicating afterwards. Yeah, that's no longer just regular fornication. That's adultery. And she's willing to do that. Why? Because she's going to get away with it. And you know this can happen because there are cases in the UK where this is going on. You also got Muslim men that are beating up their wives. That does exist, but that's not as common as what we think. Actually, that's more likely to happen with a Western uh, Muslim man than it is with an Eastern Muslim man. That's more, it's more likely to be that case. And that's if he doesn't have an education at all. Nigga don't know nothing at all. And he was in that thug life before. Chances are he, you know, he gets married. He's, got a, he's the one that's statistically most likely to whoop his wife's head. Whoop her behind, go upside her onion. That's, but nonetheless, the point I'm making is that even though that does happen, um, that's going to be overstated. Now, the community doesn't respond to it very well. I admit women have a legitimate gripe when it comes to that. But we're talking about women that are going to sit up here. And, and, and granted, if, if a woman does come out and say, look, my husband, he's been beating the hell out of me. I'm leaving this dude. Other men, if they believe that that's what's going on, they're going to deal with this dude. Because that does happen. There are cases where the community is so shocked the men don't do nothing. Somewhere, later, somewhere down the line later on, you know, these men, they go upside these dudes' heads. But... When a woman does it, nothing happens. And other women don't even say, oh, that sister, that's wrong. They don't care. They're just like, girl, get that money, get that bag. Girl, get that dinar. That's what happens. That's what goes on. So you got to realize that, that, that if you are a practicing Muslim, you may not want to walk around labeling yourself with these things, but in order to make people understand what you know, you then have to say, yeah, I'm Red Pill, I'm MGTOW, I'm Ibmore, I'm Sisbim, or something like that. See, I don't tell brothers to go get a passport so that they can go to these other countries and then just fornicate. That's not it. I recommend marriage. But the thing is, in order for men to have a marriage, what they need to do, what do they have to do? The only way I know for these men to have a marriage is to do like what I did. Okay, you're Muslim, you ain't going to fornicate, but what you do is you get your passport and you get a skill that's going to help you in another country. You go over there, and you, of course you got to sort through the bad ones. You certainly do. But you meet good people in general, men and women, and that increases your chances of meeting good women, and you don't take that good woman back to the U.S. with you, especially to live. And that's how you stay together. You treat her well, which a Muslim man has to do with his wife. You do treat her well. You don't oppress her, but you don't take her back to the States if you don't want her trying to impress you because you don't have to be a butthole. If you a butthole, you take her back to the States, you got more of a chance of her staying with you than if you're a nice man and you take her back to the States with you. Because the other women will say, well, he's too nice, he's too boring. And even though she was never socialized like that, the funny thing about it is that if a woman is socialized into that ratchet, bitter way of thinking, she can't be socialized out of it. But if a woman was not socialized into that, she can be socialized into it as an adult. Despite all these years that she was not socialized to think that way and is abhorrent in her culture. You can take a traditional Japanese woman and take her to the U.S. and the American women, they're going to get in her ear and, sh and they can corrupt her. But you can't take the American woman to Japan and have Japanese women fix her up. Why would you not be red pill in a case like that? So in part one, I pretty much said that the Western woman is going to be the reason that if you're a practicing Muslim man, you may still wind up having to be red pill. You don't have a choice because they're going to prove to you that that red pill stuff is correct. There's a, they're going to prove to you that there was a reason for something that we now call the red pill outside of the Matrix movies. Part two in this one, all I'm pretty much telling you is that the Western Muslim woman will do it and she and many times she'll do it even worse. And she will prove to you the hadith in which Muhammad, peace be to him, told us that when the Antichrist comes, you will have to tie down the women in your family. You will have to tie them down in the homes to stop them from going to join the Antichrist. And in that hadith, he did not specify the ones who have children. He just said, you got to tie them down. That says a lot. You see, they will prove to you. They will prove to you that uh, the prophet Joseph, peace be to him. Um, dealt with something that other men deal with when the minister's wife tried to get with him and he ran off and took off and he still had to go to jail for it. 
They'll prove to you this. They'll prove to you that actually, yes, you know what? When a uh, father dies, the son should inherit twice as much as the daughters. Not because you hate the daughters, but it's because the sons are responsible for taking care of the daughters. Plus, the other thing, too, was that when they inherit equally, what are these women going to do? They'll never marry anybody because nobody has enough money for them. Because it's not the men who walk around saying she has to make less money than I do. It's the women who walk around saying he has to make more money than I do. So in order to protect the institution of marriage, you got to pretty much let the ladies and the daughters inherit half from the father. Now, in other cases, the inheritance are equal. Like, say, the son dies, the mother and the father get equal inheritance, if I'm not mistaken. But when it's the father who dies, his sons and his daughters get uh, different ones. Because, it, look, what happens? You give his daughters the same as the sons. <laughs> Um, pretty soon you're going to have a situation like in the U.S. where all the women are not marrying largely because they're sitting up saying, well, there aren't any economically attractive men or financially attractive men, which pretty much means making more than I do. That's what that means. Despite liberation. That's all I'm getting at. Part one, the Western woman in general will do it. Part two, you take the Western non-Muslim woman out of it. The Western Muslim woman will prove this stuff to you. And when you terraform these Eastern uh, traditional Muslim environments outside of the West into Western environments, their women go act the ex exact same goddamn way because they not only want everything for nothing like most people do because we're, we're lazy by nature and selfish, even when we're not evil, but they will demand and insist upon everything for nothing at the man's expense. And they'll prove to you this red pill stuff. My homeboy from Egypt, one my former student from Egypt, told me that Egypt was going through a change. He said Egyptian women are now demanding the rights under Islam along with the, the Western women's rights, but the consequence of neither one, no responsibilities. They're demanding everything in exchange for nothing. And the, he said Egyptian men don't want to get married anymore. He told me this. I didn't know who Alpha Male Lifestyles was at this point when he told me that. That's real. Um... Somebody told me that in Kuwait, a father can slap his son for coming home late. The daughter can come home at any time. If he slaps the daughter for being out too late, she calls the cops and he goes to jail. That's what he told me. Yeah. In Saudi Arabia, they told me that if uh, a husband hits his wife, she can take him to court for 50000 And I'm cool with that, but what happens if she hits the husband? Ain't no court case like that. I mean, it used to be illegal for men to harass women, and that's fine, too. But the problem was there was no law about women harassing men. They just recently made it illegal for women to harass men. That's what someone told me about that. Boy, what does that say? What does that tell you? If you a Muslim man, all you got to do is keep your eyes open, and they will force you to become red pill. You don't have to want it. They will make it so that you don't have another choice. You can't draw any other conclusion without taking a seriously psychoactive drug first. I know that this is sad. I just hope that it's a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.